Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Lots of us angst about having our photos taken, particularly at this time of the year. So in this video I'm sharing loads of tips, and I mean loads of tips, to help you get ready and prepared for all those festive photos. And of course to help you always look your best. <music> know photos are a big part of any celebration. It's always really good isn't it to remind ourselves of happy memories by looking at these photos of us when we were with friends and family. So I'm sure that if you've got family gatherings or parties coming up for the festive period or any time for that matter you will probably be taking photographs. And if you're one of those people, and there are lots of them, who run a mile when photographs are mentioned, or maybe you go and hide somewhere, or ensure that you're right at the back of the group, if you're one of those people, I've got you covered. The aim of this video is to help you to be more confident and prepared, with some great ideas on how to pose and how to look the best version of ourselves, and to look and feel relaxed and happy. There is a lot to share, actually, so I'm going to break it down. I'll be sharing tips on how to pose on on your own when you're standing and also when you're sitting as well as advice on group photos and also how to present yourself personally especially well and how to take years off your appearance. So we're kind of moving from the body to the face and also to what to choose to wear. Okay so let's kick off straight away with standing photos first of all. Standing photos, posture and positions. For standing photos and to be honest most photos the ideal of course is to look as natural as possible. It's as though the camera has just caught you like that and to look as happy as possible as well. The twofold secret to looking good in photos, especially those where you're standing up, is to consider posture and position. The right posture where you pull yourself up can make you look taller and slimmer instantly, but you can also overdo it and look really stiff as well, so it's kind of a balance. Now the camera can actually put 10 pounds at least um, on your appearance, so pulling in your stomach and holding yourself high can really help with this. But so just lightly pull in your abdomen, um, but not to look like you're holding your breath too much, otherwise you'll look too tense like you've seen a ghost or you might have some bowel problems. Um, but equally don't slump because that will actually affect your posture really badly and bring about all sorts of lumps and bumps that you didn't even know you had. For position, it's all about creating shapes and curves to put yourself to best advantage. A really good position is to stand with the weight more on one leg than on the other. You can put one leg in front of the other, um, if that feels comfortable, and slightly push out your hip. It's to create more of an S shape. So remember I was talking about curves. Uh, that's the effect you want. If you want to reduce the illusion of width, um, around your hips and thighs, a position that you've probably seen me adopt quite often um, in the footage on my videos is to sort of cock my knee slightly in front of my other leg. This reduces the width, makes me look actually thinner. So think about the parts of your body that you want to highlight and those that you want to hide more or show less and throw a shape accordingly. Another thing to bear in mind is that whatever is nearest to the camera will look bigger. So to elongate the look of the body um, and to appear taller, one option is to put one leg in front of the other and slightly bend the back leg slightly behind. Uh, this will give you the illusion of looking longer. Um, you can also get the photographer to film you from slightly below as well to make you look taller, but not too much. Otherwise, you'll end up just leg and hip. Extension of these positions is to stand and turn slightly, very flattering, so you aren't full on block to the camera. That's a big mistake that, that quite a few people make, just being a block. Um, you want to sort of slightly turn, maybe 30, 45 degrees. It just creates a curve um, to move to that angle, but not too much. So all this time we've been focusing mainly on posture and body position, focusing essentially around the legs. But what about the arms? They're sort of flailing around a bit, aren't they? So if you're holding anything, like a bag, for example, a bag can be a really good prop. Use it to create a shape or two. And especially if you've got a glass, for the festive period, um, that would be a really good prop as well because it gives shape and the idea of movement. You end up moving your arm out a little bit, giving yourself a little bit more shape. Now, I often use sunglasses to play with, as you can see here, uh, and you may have noticed. And if you're really lucky, you might have an animal too, like my little baby Chanel here. 
If you have pockets, use them, but just be a little bit aware not to stuff your hands completely into the pockets really tight, because otherwise it ends up looking as though your hands have been cut off at the wrists. Um, so you need to just put them very lightly attached to the pockets just to use them as a prop, not actually to put your hands in. Thinking about holding on to something uh, makes me think about arms. So do be careful of your arms. It's a sort of technique. Try not to hold them tight to your body, because if if you do that it will squash them and make them look much fatter and wider um, than they actually are so try to hold your arms very slightly away from the body so that they're not pressed against the rest of your body so that they don't spread it's a mistake I've certainly made um, myself and I look back at the photos and I think oh my goodness do I really have such a fat arm now another thing that I like to do with my arms quite often is just to rest them uh, my arms and my hands around my middle or against my middle um, just lightly it gives me the illusion of a waist uh, which is always handy um, and it looks relaxed and it looks natural um, or you could touch your hair lightly um, as if you're in the wind um, but again try not to make it look too contrived just sort of lightly touch it something like that but it can look really elegant as well now there's also the issue of whether to put your hands on your hips or not now there's a lot of debate about this in the photography world uh, but sometimes it can look a little contrived although I have to confess that I've used it pretty often in a lot of my videos which again you may have noticed but you need to be able to be a bit careful um, not to look like you're a nagging fishwife However, using your hands to create de definition around the waist is actually a really good thing. Um, so just experiment with ways that you feel happy and natural doing it. For festive occasions, especially Christmas of course, um, you can try and do an action such as attaching a bauble to a tree. Um, but be careful not to get your back to the camera, be always aware that 45 degrees needs to be to the camera um, and also try not to stretch your arm across the front um, so that it looks like a tree trunk. So now let's move to sitting down photos. So the secret to a good sitting down photo is not to actually sit down at all. Sound weird? <laughs> actually this is the way to do it. Normally, when we sit down, the pushing down on the chair spreads the top of the leg at the widest part, sort of pushes down on it so it looks wider. So this won't look good in photos. And it also means that the knees are the part of the body closest to the camera. Again, often not our best part. So my advice is to sort of balance on the edge of the chair, not actually sit on it, um, like you can see here. So another way of approaching that is also to put one leg slightly in front of the other and tuck the other one behind otherwise you won't know what to do with the legs so it gives a lovely relaxed vibe and it's particularly successful with a more casual look such as also with jeans or with trousers or when you're wanting to look really cool now if on the other hand you're wearing a dress or a skirt I wouldn't advise that position I would still sit off the edge of the seat um, but I would favour sitting at an angle with your legs together so let's move on now to the photo that's very likely to be taken during the festive period and that is group photos on the one hand of course it's these pictures that are really lovely these pictures are the ones that are going to bring back all the happy memories of all the times at Christmas and other special events these are the ah moments but on the other hand of course they are more tricky really because you have less control over them because there's so many more people to take into account and it's a little bit more difficult of course there's a lot to taking successful group pictures or any pictures and I'm not a professional photographer but I will share some tips that I think work um, and that make really good group photos. Firstly, don't put your arms around each other. Now I know that sounds really odd for a festive picture where you're showing the love, but actually if you're not careful it will end up looking like you've got no hands and no arms. Or you might end up with having alien hands in strange places, such as this picture. Now this picture is lovely, but there are a couple of very oddly placed hands playing centre stage in this picture. <laughs> Another thing to think about is try and have the main characters in the center of your picture. So for example, in this picture, the parents or grandparents are clearly in the center with their grandchildren placed each side. It's very well composed and it's really, really balanced and yet it looks lovely at the same time. And the next point is make a triangle. So making great group photos is as much about creating shapes as single photos are. 
it's the whole group that actually makes the shape. So one really good shape for a group is to create a triangle like this. So either a pyramid with somebody at the top and then everybody um, li sort of lining down below to make a wider bit at the bottom, or an inverted triangle where you've got the little ones or a little animal at the bottom and the shape goes up like that and then people are more in a line at the top. It's very pleasing to the eye, very aesthetically nice. Of course, avoid stiffness. <laughs> Easier said than done, isn't it? Um, the idea is, of course, to look natural. And as soon as somebody says look natural, you go, um, and saying cheese is never a, a good idea because it makes you grin from ear to ear, which is, again, not a very sort of elegant look. So like, cheese like that doesn't really work. There are a couple of little strategies. First of all, think of someone that you love or something that makes you really happy. That will give you a nice relaxed look on your face or sort of breathe out like this or stretch and then go <sighs> so that tends to just relax the face a little bit more which is again much more natural Another tip for a really successful group photo is to compress together. Now it might feel a little bit claustrophobic to you, but it will actually look perfect on camera. What you don't want is lots of gaps between people. Also, don't stand straight onto the camera. You don't want to be a block. Um, just slightly at an angle, as we talked about for the single shots. It's just as important for the groups, actually. Um, standing like a block in front of the camera will just make you look wider and more wooden. And very importantly, try not to take a photograph where you've got your back to the window because you and everybody else in the group will just end up looking like silhouettes. Now we're going to move from the body positions to the face, to your clothes and to you personally and how best to present so. you. Now the first point in this is try and wear two elements of makeup at least that I would suggest. Firstly, some mascara so that you've got some definition around the eyes. Um, and secondly, a pretty pink or a pretty colour or a bright colour lipstick. Because otherwise there's a danger in photographs that your facial features can get lost or they can look washed out, particularly if you're not in control of the lighting. The next thing to do to your face is to add a touch of translucent face powder just to the forehead, the nose, the chin and maybe just here around here. Now even if you're not a powder wearer there's a big difference between um, wearing some for the, for the photograph which means that you won't shine in, in all the wrong places and if you don't uh, your face is in danger of shining and reflecting off the light and it's not a good look. If you're not happy about powder just a translucent one is really effective. There are two that I would personally recommend. Firstly the Laura Mercier um, loose or pressed um, translucent powder uh, which again no color obviously um, or my other current favorite at the moment which is called is it cosmetics bye bye pores um, which is particularly brilliant because not only does it give a little matte finish but also your, it reduces your pores dramatically so no shine no pores perfection let's move on to clothes and what i would say is the type of fabric that you wear you need to think about you need to think about wearing a block colour uh, rather than intricate patterns or stripes or particularly stripes or very involved designs. They never come out so well on the camera. Small stripes and high contrast patterns won't set you off to best advantage. They'll look confusing, they'll look dizzying and just too busy really. Now one colour to consider not wearing, and you might be surprised by this, is solid pillar box red. Now if you wear a whole dress in this colour, that will be the first thing that you see when you look at this picture. Not you, just the dress. If it's a very, very bright Santa Claus look. Festive red, of course, is wonderful, but maybe just one item that you're wearing, or maybe on an accent, or maybe a slightly more muted version. Try to have some space at the throat. Um, not tons and tons of cleavage, of course, unless you're comfortable with that, but something that's a V-neck or a round neck or a scoop neck, because it's much more flattering to elongate the look of the neck. Now, you might say, you've been showing us all these shapes in front of the Christmas tree wearing a turtleneck, which is not the most flattering of looks, and that is true. But the reason why I was wearing a turtleneck and some trousers is so that you can sh you can see really clearly what the shapes are that I'm making and see you know what happens to the body when I'm making these positions. Another point is overall it's actually better to go for slightly more formal structured outfits in photos such as these. 
because very casual floppy sort of clothes can have the danger of looking a bit messy um, and they don't lie properly in these sorts of photos. And of course do select clothes that you know will flatter your figure. Now if you'd like me to do more on what to wear in photographs please do drop a comment in the, in the comment box below the video because I always love to hear from you. Next point which in my case is very important is the chin technique. Now I suffer somewhat from what I tend to try and call too much skin <laughs> underneath my chin but what in reality is a double chin if I'm not careful. So for pictures what I try to do is to sort of very slightly jut out my chin, very slightly. Um, it can't be seen from the front, um, but my face is therefore held better on a better sort of pedestal, as it were. But this is a classic case of not too much because you otherwise you end up jutting out way too much. Another tip, of course, one of the most important is pull yourself up. I know that I've said this before, I know it's repeat, um, but it is absolutely key to looking great in a photograph. And the secret to looking 30 years younger in a photograph is AEAF lock. Now, this is something you can do on your iPhone. So in order to do it, all you need to do is to go on, obviously, to the taking picture area of the phone. Hold your finger on your subject's face um, until the yellow square comes up and it says AEAF lock in yellow at the top. Then put your finger along the side of the square and just slide it up to lighten it. Now you'll see it not only lightens, but it also softens the focus, taking years off the subject's face. But obviously you need to be a little bit careful, it, I mean it needs, it needs a bit of experimentation because it also changes the colour and is a bit of a danger to make you look a bit orange. So do experiment with it, apply a little and experiment again, but it's really worth it ladies. Of course there are lots of apps out there um, for iPhones or for Androids um, and you may already be using them, but the idea behind them is to soften the face, soften the features on the face, not the features, the lines, <laughs> even better. Um, um, so those are a really good thing to use and I tend to use for photographs, not for this, but for photographs, I tend to use an app called Lenza. Um, I will put the link underneath the video for you. So all the links to the things that you've seen me wearing in this video and also to some of the items that you can see in the photos that I've used to illustrate points during this video, they will all be listed in the video description underneath as well. And I really hope that this has helped you ladies because there's nothing worse than looking at a photograph that you've had a wonderful time and you look at the photograph afterwards and you think oh I could have looked better than that so the aim of this video is to help you to look your very best and I really hope it's helped and lots of love and I hope you have a really amazing day and I'll see you really really soon bye